problem remains. Oh, don't even get me started on getting along with people. It's like I physically repel the human species. I swear, I don't stink, and I'm not bad to look at. I'm actually the pretty type. Everyone just has a problem with my attitude. The look that society likes to put on me is that of a tomboy. No, it's not my fault if my brain is no, not hardwired to like the typical things that girls are expected to do. Like, can I just leave me alone? If I hate makeup, then it's my problem, not anyone else. It's up to me to decide what length my hair should be. I like to keep a boy cut or a dark one, like the Zan French. Oh yes, I'm cultivated, thank you very much. So what? And I a diet if I wear trousers and a and a baseball hat on my head. Sometimes I feel like screaming. We are in the 21st century, guys. Can you all go up a little bit? Anyway, that's not the topic to have. What I'm about to tell you is how my nightmare came to become a living reality. You know the jocks, the typical dumb ones who have everything except for a brain. Like, no, I am not judging anyone or anything, but sometimes the situation calls for it. One fine day, I was running on a time crunch. I had procrastinated, as usual, and waited for the last moment to submit my assignment. I had exactly five minutes left before the deadline to submit would be over. So I must have been obscene that day, running and slipping on the tiled floors towards the elevator. Screaming and people said, Get the heck out of my way, freak! I was completely out of breath by the time I reached the doors of the dining elevator. But my eyes widened in horror when I realized that five guys from the football team were already inside, including Liam. A bit of background on Liam. He was the first guy I ever dated. But it was always- Come inside! After we had made out, he revealed his true colors. I remember that scene very distinctly in my head. He and some of the other jock friends of his were all gathered around me in the cafeteria. Liam had brought me there in the context of giving me a surprise. And boy, what a big, bad surprise that was. I had been pranked. They had just so casually fooled me. Liam wasn't with me because he had feelings for me or anything. No, he was just scared by his friends to make out with me. Well, Come that escalated quickly. Time! Doggy, I'm gonna kill you! 24 years of my life, after my long forgotten incident, I got out of there, but not before I got my revenge. I slapped him hard in front of the whole cafeteria and left without another word. So yeah, you can guess by now that those football guys are not exactly a big fan of me. They did try to bring me down by doing petty things like spreading rumors about me or posting grating stuff regarding me on social media, but did I care? No. As I was contemplating taking the stairs, one of the guys in the elevator asked me to come in very politely. I knew him. His name was Nash. Now, here's the thing about Nash. He was the nicest of all of them. He was the only one who had apologized to me on behalf of his team. After the whole Liam fiasco, I actually found out that he was not involved in the whole dare thing. But I had trust issues after him. Don't he come inside! So, to Nash was brush him off and be rude at every occasion I got. So I decided to be good for once and agreed to get in the elevator. Don't get me 
Sorry, Mom. It was I, know, I, I didn't want to get any later than I already had. But by now, I hope you get the idea of how my life was playing with me. It was just my lucky day. No, to the star driver. After a few seconds of silent ride and the air clip of tension, the yeah. elevator came to a stop. It was not on any floor. It was between two floors. Long story short, we were stuck. Or should I say, I was stuck, literally, in an elevator with a football team, who I was sure hated my kiss. In my defense, the feeling was mutual. But that didn't matter at the moment. I was cursing myself for ever getting in the same elevator as them. I just texted my friend, we will get help soon. Liam's voice traveled towards me. He was standing in a corner against the wall. I could feel that his eyes were constantly on me. My skin circled and I almost gagged in disgust. As if sensing my discomfort, Nash tried to divert the topic and diffuse the tension in the end. But one of the idiot jocks had to open his mouth and ruin everything. You know, Adrian, you won't look bad if you grow out your hair, he commented. And maybe try wearing a bit more girl clothes. I was about to snap at him when Nash came to my defense and asked him to leave me. I have a question though, another guy spoke up. Did your parents really name you Adrian? My name is Adrian, though. I leave my spell and change to Adrian just to see what everyone's reaction would be. And let me tell you, I was not disappointed. That was just what I had expected. Gas and whatnot, but that's a story for another time. That's none of your business. I would like to jump for three weeks. Where do you get those kind of clothes? He asked again. Dude, you know, you're not a good influence on other girls. Another dumb jock started. I have asked my sister to stay away from girls like you. It was suddenly getting suffocating, and all our voices combined kept ringing in my ears. They didn't shut their mouth, though. They were taking full advantage of the situation. Even the rush asked them to stop. Of course I clapped back with class and plume, and got the two moron jocks back in their corners. More than half an hour in, the stench of sweat became crumb. and they had decided to release the gas and gross us out. I placed my bets on the jocks who kept on asking me dumb questions. Or maybe it was them, because I could swear that I heard a noise coming from his direction. Doggy, but before anyone could tell him, he started the conversation to torture me. Hear. No wonder, Adrienne, that your love hear life hear is a failure. This time it was Liam who spoke up. I mean, you're not dog looking. I would say pretty even. He was suddenly excited, grabbing my hand. I quickly jerked off his hand and walked away, only to bump into another guy who was sneering at me. I moved to the other side, but another guy was standing there, his eyes full of mockery. I wanted to escape, but there was no way out. Before I knew it, my eyes had filled with tears, not because of their stupid remarks that could only emerge from a reptilian brain. No, my eyes were tearing because of the sweat and fart smell that was surrounding my core senses. Once again, they had managed to get the best out of my vulnerability. But just as I was thinking that I was trapped, a warm hand grabbed mine and pulled me to the side. I looked up to see Nash's concerned face. He crossed my hand in reassurance and asked his teammates to back off. They argued a bit, but eventually got tired of laughing. After an hour or so, suddenly one of the guys started singing. His friend joined him with self-composed lyrics. A different guy started rapping and singing to them. And to my surprise, Liam and Nash started feeding the hot game. The whole room inside the elevator changed within a matter of minutes. Nash asked me to join in and I couldn't resist. It's the elevator rap. Come on, y'all sing with me. It's the elevator rap. Soon I was rapping in tune with them and this is how we passed the next half an hour. Before we knew it, the elevator had started again and we were descending towards the ground floor. I kept them to medicine until they were encountering some difficulties and it would be better if we used the stairs for a few days. At least this time, I had a legit excuse for throwing the deadline on my school report. And now I got to have a day after all. So, that's how the day went by. However, things changed after that day. Nash had made a place for himself in my heart. We started seeing more of each other, and I guess we're having more than our friend days now. But there's a problem in the relationship with him. I can never be too sure. What if this is just another diabolical plan of the football team, and they're playing another you know, prank on me? What if Nash is just like Liam and is me for his own entertainment? What do you suggest I do? Should I give him a chance and set myself up for another potential heartbreak? Or should I just distance myself from him while there's still time? Here we go! <laughs> you are catching fire.
Hello. My name is Amelia, and I am 26 years old. This is the story of something that my doctor did to me that made my life a living hell. Doctors are supposed to be life savers, not liars, cheaters, and...